Well, welcome to those who are coming in and joining us today. Um, as we always do with our webinars, we're going to just kill off a few minutes waiting until all of the registered participants have uh, joined in. We've um, got uh, our largest registration today for participation in the in this webinar, the tips for purchasing a pre-owned multi hole with my colleague Patrick. So we're just going to take a few minutes to uh, let the counter uh, build up there with showing that everyone has joined in and then we'll uh, commence today's webinar. Um, for those who haven't been on the multi hole Solutions webinars before, my name's Greg, Greg Boller, uh, and up in the top screen there, with the uh, fantastic uh, background screensaver, the blue screen of the, the yacht anchored out there in, in the tropical islands is Patrick. So we've got a fair few people beginning to log in. Just while we're waiting for everyone to log in, we'll just uh, click over the screen here and we'll just remind everyone about our upcoming uh, webinars. So today's is the ninth in the series of webinars since we uh, since we commenced these uh, as a, a way of communicating with our client base after the uh, on onset of the COVID lockdown back in March, and they've been tremendously successful. And and if you haven't seen any of the webinars so far and you want to watch them, they're all on the Multi Hulk Solutions YouTube channel, and so you can go back and watch our previous uh, events. Uh, a reminder that the next webinar after this one is in two weeks' time, the Friday the 14th of August with Marcus Overman, uh, a walkthrough of the MY44 power catamaran. Uh, last, the last webinar we did was the walkthrough of the Il Iliad 70 and it was uh, a really informative uh, event. So we're looking forward to doing the same in two weeks' time on the MY44 power catamaran. Another uh, new one that we've just thrown into the mix for next Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Uh, is a pop-up webinar uh, talking about the new release, the new uh, Fountain Bijou Isla 40. It's spelled I-S-L-A. Uh, we would probably say Isla, but the, the factory Fontaine Bijou, they're calling it the Isla 40. And so uh, we're going to do a uh, impromptu pop-up webinar next Wednesday evening. So you can register for that at the multi Hole Solutions website. Uh, another thing that's coming up is we have an open for inspection event on August 2nd, so that's tomorrow. So if you're uh, in New Zealand and you want to go down and meet the uh, team, Chris and Simon, uh, you can do that uh, at the Auckland open for inspection event. Details of that are on our, uh, on, on our website on the events page. And then on the 28th of August, we're going to do first aid for cruising. Uh, that's an event where we've got Wendy Sullivan arranged, uh, a very experienced uh, sailor and uh, first aid officer is going to come and uh, give a great webinar all about first aid for cruising. That's Friday the 28th of August. And then, um, oh, excuse me, I'm just having a mouse issue. Uh, and then the webinar to follow that. Oh. Just bear with me. Ah, oh, there we go. The webinar to follow that is on the uh, 11th of September. Uh, is all about the cruising the Greek islands in the Eastern Aegean and the coast of Turkey. That's with our colleagues or, or our partners, Mariner Boating. And part of that discussion will be to also talk about the event that we'll be having uh, through those islands next year. Uh, all things, if everything goes to plan and then we're allowed Cross borders, we'll be uh, having an event over there on a on, on a um, fleet of Fontaine de Joes. And then Friday 25th of September is Sailing Indonesia. And I think a lot of the people who are on today's webinar to, who are interested in brokerage boats and buying boats locally in the region, that's certainly a cruising area that is on most people's bucket list. So moving along, uh, the other thing to remember too is we've just scheduled we normally have a Gold Coast open day in February of each year, which is where at the uh, boat works on the Gold Coast, we have all of our uh, brokerage boats up on the hard and people come and 
uh, look through the boats and it's it's probably our, our biggest and most focused brokerage event of the year. We've rescheduled that and we're going to be holding that this year on November the 14th on the Gold Coast. So if you're uh, in Southeast Queensland and you want to meet up with all of our brokerage team and look at the boats that are on display, pencil that date into your diaries, November, Saturday, November the 14th. Okay, so we've got, uh, looks like we've got many of our uh, registered participants have joined in. Um, as we go through today with Patrick's presentation, if you haven't done our webinars before, you can ask questions whenever you like throughout the uh, presentation by going to the Q&A button on your screen, type your question, and then either Rachel or I will then let you know if we're going to be interrupting Patrick to answer that question uh, as he's going, or we may decide to uh, move it to the end of the presentation to the Q&A session. So just because your question doesn't get answered straight away, don't worry. We will answer and present Patrick with all the questions uh, either during the presentation or at the end. Uh, and we do hope that there's lots of questions today. We know that people have some fairly specific uh, requests to make, so don't hesitate to ask a question. Okay, just there's uh, myself, Greg, who's talking to you now, and Rachel, who's in the background uh, doing the production of the webinar today. And then here is Patrick. So Patrick's uh, our multi hole Solutions Brokerage Manager. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my camera off now and I'm going to hand over to Patrick uh, so that he can uh, commence the presentation. But as you can see, he's had many years of experience in the industry. He's, uh, uh, he's brokered, as he says there, just about practically every make and model uh, of, of boat there is. And just as well as that, uh, Patrick is going to introduce the team. So I'm going to mute now, Patrick, and hand over to you. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Greg, for your uh, introduction. Um, yes, I've been, uh, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for joining in. I hear that uh, uh, you've got a record number of uh, uh, people coming and joining in. So. Uh, Thanks for joining. I uh, have been in this uh, uh, business for quite a few years now. Um, previously was uh, uh, involved with uh, uh, a big yard in the south of France. You probably noticed uh, my accent. Uh, uh, I'm from France. Uh, uh, it said earlier that uh, I'm fluent in English. Uh, I'm all right, but uh, I hope that you'll be uh, uh, indulgent there if I uh, uh, make some mistakes while I speak, but I'll do my best. And um, yeah, I've been working for the yard uh, uh, in the south of France, Katana, building some uh, multi hulls in charge of uh, the uh, export uh, business over there. And then uh, since then, uh, from the beginning, involved with the uh, multi hulls, founding the company there together with uh, Mark Angington and some other partners. And uh, uh, now, after more than 10 years in business, specialized in multi hulls So uh, I'll be happy to uh, use this uh, experience and uh, 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 try to uh, guide you through some uh, tips, some advices that I've prepared, some ideas in, uh, to help you with your search of the right uh, catamaran. But obviously, uh, uh, it's not only about me. You can see here uh, the whole team uh, behind, uh, in the background, sometimes in the foreground, here are some brokers, uh, the people involved with the uh, service, with the uh, marketing, with the uh, uh, backup office accounting and everything. So it's, uh, it's uh, 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 a whole team there of motivated people to uh, help you uh, in the search because I don't have all the answers, but uh, I know where to find them because we've got some very competent people behind us. And this is also uh, tied to uh, the power of the, of the network. Let me see whether I can move, here we go. So uh, you can see we have uh, uh, offices throughout the whole Asia Pacific uh, area. So uh, uh, the, um, the main office where we are here in Mululaba is uh, where all the admin and all the backup office is located. And then we've got uh, uh, sales offices 
and uh, represented uh, throughout uh, uh, well Australia, but of course New Zealand in Auckland. We're starting to open some new facilities in New Zealand because uh, business is very uh, uh, important down there. And then in the Pacific Islands, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, just negotiating a deal uh, of a Lagoon uh, 56 space in New Caledonia as we speak. And uh, a Tahiti, very important point uh, in our structure. This is where most of the boats arrive and start thinking about selling. So we've got a, a great uh, 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 person helping us there, Gilles. Uh, Asia is a massive side of our business with uh, three offices nonetheless in uh, Phuket and uh, uh, another person in Singapore with an office there. At the moment he's hiding from uh, the COVID but uh, we'll be with back shortly. Malaysia, Hong Kong. So we really try to cover the whole area to uh, find the right boats wherever they may be. And what you can see here are all the, the other brokers involved because we uh, have uh, some agreements in place with uh, uh, brokers in the US, in Europe, and we do some uh, reciprocal agreements to find the, the buyer or the, the, the listing depending uh, on the situation. So uh, we really try to uh, uh, offer everything to uh, your advantage. The first stage, I think, and this is where I'm trying to uh, uh, help you out, is uh, uh, an effort that uh, we all have to do uh, together. You there on your side is to uh, make sure we, uh, that you find the right boat, is to define your projects. That's the, the, the genesis. And you have to ask yourself some uh, very important questions. And once we can find the answer to those uh, questions, then uh, I think we'll have the uh, a uh, much stronger idea will be able to identify what uh, uh, is the best boat for you. So uh, what is the usage? That's uh, essential, of course, to uh, define the, uh, you have to sit down and discuss this with your loved ones and see uh, what is your uh, project all about, where and what to do. So uh, is it gonna be coastal cruising, which is probably a, a, a big chunk of all market people who are still busy or have some obligations with the family and, and, and others and they uh, just want to use the boat, go up uh, during the season and uh, down there to uh, avoid the, the cyclone. Uh, liverboard is the, another stage. We do have some uh, clients who want to sell everything they've got and jump on a boat to uh, live there with the family. Uh, you will probably need some other features on the boat. Blue water crossing, uh, uh, even circumnavigation, we call this when uh, you are considering picking up a boat uh, somewhere else uh, on the other side of the world and maybe slowly uh, uh, cruise back into uh, uh, your home country. So uh, for charter uh, is uh, obviously when you uh, leave the boat into management and, and uh, someone is taking care of all the maintenance and you're getting some uh, money back, it's more of a business syndication with shares when uh, you can't afford to have the whole boat but uh, you're happy to share with uh, other people into your boat. So all those uh, 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 goals that you have set are essential to be able to find uh, the right boat. When is an important question. When are you uh, planning on starting your cruise? Uh, could be right away. Uh, you've got some uh, money burning your pockets and you want to uh, start uh, your cruise right away. We need to find something which uh, matches uh, uh, your needs. Could be in six months, a year, if you have more time uh, because you still have to sell your business or um, you, you're gonna get retired soon or in a few years at least, you're still making some, uh, some, some plans. Then we've got some uh, more time to prepare for everything. And at the end, I'll give you some uh, tools there to uh, uh, try to get a little bit more knowledgeable and get ready for your project. Who is a big question as well. I mean, are you gonna go there on your own? Can be. Some others uh, will have uh, the second half or uh, the kids, the whole family. This is important to uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, determine the size of the boat, but more importantly, the layout, how many cabins, depending on the age of the people, limitations, maybe, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone a little bit older as uh, trouble jumping into the bed. We have to find the right boat for this. So 
we have to uh, study exactly who will be using the boat and uh, what their specific needs are. Where, um, yes, uh, is it going to be, uh, do you want to have a boat back into your home country because you are busy with work, some family obligations, and uh, in which case we need to find a boat and uh, uh, import it into your home country, find one here, already uh, uh, taxes paid and uh, here on the market, or uh, are you ready for a bigger adventure? You've got plenty of time up your sleeves and uh, you could pick up the boat wherever. This could be exciting because there are some amazing destinations like I can think of Tahiti to uh, slowly bring the boat through the whole Pacific uh, or other locations in Europe, for example. So uh, uh, all this is obviously crucial in uh, defining you know, which boat is good for you. Budget, <laughs> not, uh, not the least there, uh, but not essential, but it is, uh, I mean, it is essential, but not the most important one. Uh, budget, uh, what is important there is for you to uh, make sure that um, you allow some margin here. Yeah. You know how much you want to spend, but you always have to be uh, uh, a little bit conservative because uh, a lot of things can happen uh, on a boat. You may need money for maintenance, for this, for that, for the unexpected. It is always a little bit of an adventure. And as for any adventure, you have to provision for some potential risk or anything. So don't, uh, as we say in French, don't go in the water, uh, don't go there swimming in the, with the water just there. Make sure that you have a bit of a, of a, of a margin so that uh, you can provision with, uh, for all those unexpected things. Maybe you have already some uh, model in brands, uh, preferences in mind, you've done some homework already. This will help then uh, uh, narrow the choice, which takes, takes us to the, to the next uh, uh, big question. Uh, I think a broker uh, is essential, of course, you know, it is our job, so uh, uh, I wouldn't say the country, but uh, it's, it's a true advice because we've seen uh, a lot of clients who have uh, tried the whole process, so you could be extremely lucky and go through the whole process there uh, without uh, uh, much issues. I doubt it's going to happen because uh, we do come across ourselves a lot of uh, little obstacles there here and there. It's never an easy process, and you probably have to think about uh, the way you buy a house. I mean, there's usually a broker involved there somewhere to uh, help you out, someone who uh, can guide you through the whole process and uh, is aware of, uh, you know, the legal aspects and uh, everything there. So before you venture there on your own in uh, run into catastrophe, I think you have to consider this very carefully. Um, but then how do you choose the right broker? This is uh, uh, how uh, you have to build, you have to um, analyze the whole situation and trust is obviously a very important feature. Trust is uh, in every relationship, as you know, uh, 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 vital. How do you, it will be built over time. You have to uh, probably uh, start uh, uh, engaging into a conversation and I'm sure you have some gut feeling there already whether you can trust because you, you will need some trust through the whole process. So uh, this, it is uh, something that uh, you will have to judge uh, yourself, but uh, engage them, ask the question and see how they answer. Experience, you need someone who's been in this business for long enough so that, uh, you know, they can uh, help you out uh, with all the, the little details. They've been through uh, sufficient cases that uh, they should be able to, uh, help uh, uh, whenever they encounter something in your case. Professionalism, I think this is uh, the ability of the broker to uh, master everything of his uh, job, all the different aspects, uh, I'm talking about uh, the technical things, but the legality, the customs, everything. This is how, uh, in this again, you have to ask the right questions and see how well they can answer. Specialization, I believe, is important as well. If you want to buy a, a power boat, you want to see someone who is uh, specialized into power boats. You want to buy a monohull, the same. You're going to see the, 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 the best broker in monohulls in, or multi-hulls. So whatever you have in mind, you want to see a specialist. So I think uh, you have to scroll and do your research and make sure that uh, you find the right person there. Accreditations, we've put there a few. 
this is uh, not uh, obviously everything, but uh, I think it is a good base because you will have uh, the frame of uh, the whole business there onto uh, a code of practices, say uh, here BIA in Australia, or we've got you know, all of them in different countries, or some, sometimes some international uh, brokers association. They give you the tools there, the contracts, they give you also the obligation to uh, have uh, the holding accounts. Uh, all those things are reassuring. And I think that's uh, not all, but certainly a minimum stage that uh, you want to uh, uh, ask your broker through. Services, what is he going to offer for you? So uh, how far is he going to go? Is he going to hold your hand through the whole process, you know, uh, including C trial, the, the, the survey, or uh, you know, going abroad there if the bird is far away, organizing there with a the network. Um, this is, these are all the questions that uh, you want to ask there as well when you start engaging uh, a broker. And Patrick, um, you, you, you mentioned there about experience and professionalism and trust. One thing that I, I've realized quite strongly in, the, uh, in yacht sales and especially brokerage, do you think it's important to have a broker who, when they don't know something, says, I don't know the answer to that? That's a very good point. Yeah, this is what I, I try to say in the, in the beginning with the whole team. Uh, you may not have all, all the answers, but you have to be able to guide your client through the right persons. If there's something very specific about the sales, well, call the sale maker or call the rigger, but at least you know who they are, where they are, and you can guide them through the whole process. But uh, I agree, someone who uh, will at one stage say, uh, I don't know about this, I need to double check, is very reassuring. This is a very good point. Back to the, uh, to the little points here. Uh, so network, yeah, we, we saw it. I think it is crucial to be able to uh, afford uh, your client or the client uh, a network. So. Uh, people in other places who can uh, help check on the boat, who can uh, advise you on the different uh, 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 aspects of the, of the legal uh, uh, contract there, or customs more importantly. So uh, it's uh, important to have someone well established with a big network there around. Testimonials, I think if you can reach some uh, uh, people who have been through the process with those brokers, it is obviously idea, work, the word of mouth. Uh, sometimes you can ask them to get access to uh, 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 some client's feedback or uh, maybe online you can find some information there as well of people who have been through the similar process and see how they uh, judge them. And of course results you want to see people who are actually uh, selling boats. Uh, uh, this seems to be quite obvious but sometimes get uh, a little bit forgotten. You want to make sure that you deal with people who can uh, move boats quickly and uh, can negotiate uh, uh, the right way there for you to reach the best uh, results. How many uh, yachts uh, did you did your team broker uh, last year, Pat, uh, on that point? Last year, about uh, 50, 50 boats. Yes, okay. So um, I think we, we, yeah, we did put uh, uh, some, some more details there online, but yeah, it's uh, 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 this year it'll be uh, uh, some, somehow similar. Sometimes it, it does depend also on the size. You can uh, spend some more time on bigger boats. But yes, you, uh, you want uh, some, some uh, strong results there to be, uh, to be able to make it worth it. And has COVID impacted your team in terms of sales or is it still ticking along? Well, yeah, of course it will impact somehow because people can't travel and can uh, see the boat. So we're, we're missing a few things. But uh, on the other hand, we've had a lot of... Uh, very uh, passionate uh, uh, buyers there who uh, probably realized, look, if uh, everything is so complicated, we may as well buy the boat now and get away from all this. So we did have some uh, strong sales, believe it or not, uh, uh, here locally in Queensland, but uh, 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 in other places like New Zealand as well, uh, everything's been sold on the shelf. And then it was more into finding some new products. So. Uh, all in all, it still has been uh, fairly strong. It maybe won't be a record year, but uh, it won't be the worst for sure. Yeah, it's fantastic. So um, 
once you've been uh, uh, through the whole pro uh, process of uh, defining your project and finding the right uh, broker, uh, you should be then uh, able to provide uh, a short list of, uh, of a few boats uh, matching your criteria. If he's a good broker, he would have asked you all those questions there yourself that we've been through together there in the beginning to uh, identify exactly what uh, you are on the market for and uh, find the right match. And then it's a question of uh, engaging and having some feedback uh, uh, with him so that uh, we can fine tune from uh, you know a, a happy few into a, 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 a handful and then probably one boat to be negotiated. So it is a, an exciting process and uh, I think uh, if the job is done properly from the beginning we can uh, very quickly come into uh, some interesting choices. And this is when I think we come to uh, uh, some very important aspects that uh, are essential in this presentation, I believe, is about the compromises. It's all about compromises and uh, probably more so onto a boat. And you will face some uh, difficult decisions uh, uh, and you have to find the best uh, balance between uh, performance and comfort, for, uh, uh, for example. Uh, uh, performance, uh, you know, uh, uh, say on, on the extreme side, you take a very uh, fast boat, fast catamaran, is going to be something very narrow, very uh, uh, uncomfortable, let's face it, you've seen some pictures, and that's on the extreme uh, end of the spectrum. But then if you move the cursor uh, into more comfort, then you will lose a little bit of this performance. It's one or the other, and then we just have to stop the cursor where it is right for you. Comfort means more room, more storage, more uh, equipment, more everything, but uh, uh, also is a trade-off to performance on the sail. So uh, uh, if it's a sailboat, of course, if it's a, if it's a power boat, then we've got some other constraints. But uh, here uh, with sailboats, uh, it's something that you have to keep in mind and we have to be able to find the right balance. It's not the perfect boat for everyone, it's, it will be the perfect boat for you which we need to find that together. Um, and then you always have that uh, interesting one, bigger and uh, older versus smaller and uh, younger. And this, I think, was one of the questions that we have received today. I think uh, uh, you will understand that uh, for the same budget, you will always have this uh, dilemma of uh, 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 a bigger, longer boat, uh, but it will have to be a little bit older uh, if you compare it with a newer boat and uh, a bit shorter. And I think this, oh, this, this is why we have to define your project in the first stages, because this is where the answer to that question will be. Uh, if you want to do some uh, serious circumnavigations you know, in the seven seas, I do believe that uh, a longer boat might be the better choice there for you. Longer means uh, 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 more stability there, more comfort at sea, uh, even inside, but at sea in terms of motion, more performance, probably not into, uh, into racing, but more in terms of uh, getting across quicker. You want, it's more of a safety feature. You want to sail there across and limit your exposure to the elements. And this is an important uh, factor there. Um, production uh, versus custom boats is obviously uh, uh, a question that we see there as well. Most of our clients choose uh, production boats, but those who know exactly what they want may be tempted by a custom boat and fine tune uh, to their own specifications. It is all right. Uh, so uh, uh, these are also some choices, uh, something maybe in between, which is a production boat, which has been customized a little bit uh, to a certain extent. But I think uh, bottom line is uh, a production boat is easy to buy, easy to resell there as well for those uh, uh, who are at the, uh, uh, in the learning stages or uh, at the beginning they in custom boats is really for those who are extremely uh, savvy, they know exactly what they want, but the risk is uh, for resale is gonna be more difficult there as well. And also custom boats usually mean uh, custom problems. So uh, you have to keep this in mind. The market values, you wanna go through this with your broker. 
Um, you want to have a look at all the worldwide uh, market prices. Everything today is worldwide. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not uh, into your little country there anymore. Uh, all the prices are uh, uh, pretty much the same around the world. You have to check it all out and see whether this boat that uh, you're looking at is uh, priced uh, uh, the right way or whether it's completely uh, off charts. And um, also you have to check on the, um, uh, the sold boat values. You wanna make sure that um, uh, the asking price that you see there on the market is one thing, but uh, the sold boat price are the values to which you know, those boats have sold there in the past. So this is crucial information. Your broker should have access to this information uh, from the uh, uh, backup uh, office day from the website, the same way uh, they do this in the real estate. But also if he's a successful broker, he should have some uh, of his own data uh, uh, from the boat that he has sold. So there's something uh, uh, which is important to determine whether this is the right price when you put your offer. We have, you have to be uh, helped into the negotiation. Everyone wants to have a win, but it has to be something which is reasonable and you want to know where it lies. Depreciation is something for you know, uh, younger boats that you want to keep uh, into consideration there as well. It's not an easy process. Uh, and sorry to interrupt, Patrick, but just back to that sole boat value. Uh, having worked alongside you for a number of years and your team, isn't that one of the great values of, say, the larger group like multi hole Solutions? Because it's, there's two things here. There's the sale price, but what you are very experienced at is helping the seller know what price to list that. Correct. Yeah, and uh, we spend a lot of time. This uh, won't be the topic today, but it's, uh, it will be for another webinar. It's an uh, uh, important process. We spend a lot of time explaining sellers where the real market price is uh, is lying there it sometimes it is believe me because you will end up there one day uh, a, a tedious process but it is important to put the boat at the right uh, level or else uh, you'll be dragging the boat there forever and lose uh, a lot of interest uh, so yeah back to the depreciation here uh, it's something that uh, we can uh, guide you through as well with uh, some figures to uh, help you understand uh, how this works and uh, put the right value to the boat that uh, we are looking at together. Then uh, remember though, uh, when you compare those market prices and everything, yeah, it has to be apples with apples. And they, they again, we have to scratch behind the surface. And uh, this is a, a also a very a tedious process. The, you know, demands a lot of work to uh, check the, uh, the age, the the version, uh, you know, you have different uh, models and then doing those, um, uh, for those models, different uh, versions there as well, the evolution, the this, the that. So uh, we have to compare them to make sure that uh, otherwise uh, uh, there's no, 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 no point there. Um, and then you've got uh, a lot more difference. And let me see that because I can't see what is there on that screen anymore. Yeah, the uh, layout is very important. Usually, Four cabin layouts uh, uh, can be uh, ex chartered not always, but if they are, they tend to sell for a bit less, that the value would be a little bit less. So you wanna make sure that when you compare, you know which layout it is. And uh, options, yes, it is important, but it's not uh, the most important thing. Remember, I see it uh, often there uh, uh, that people say, oh yeah, but this boat doesn't have, uh, I don't know, the aircon, for example, so it's not the right uh, boat for me. Well, be careful. It's Probably, or it may be the right boat. And don't forget, you can always add those options down the track for the right amount of money. So uh, don't be stopped by uh, the amount of equipment uh, uh, of a boat. This shouldn't be the deal breaker. Make sure that uh, you're all aware of this. Uh, if you find the right boat, and this is something important to keep in mind when we talk about uh, compromises. Compromise is when uh, you look at boats, you want to find uh, uh, out of 10 points, uh, uh, you know, if you find seven or eight, be quite happy. It's probably uh, pretty close to uh, the right boat there for you because finding 10 out of 10 is going to be extremely difficult. So uh, you have to allow for compromises there. And this now, Patrick, is what I mean with those options. Pa Patrick, we've had quite a few questions come through of which uh, there's a number that we will save to the end in the Q&A. 
but there's right. a cup there's a couple that have both been uh, a few that are both coming through asking the same questions and that is and it's a valid where we are in the presentation now it, one question is i understand everyone needs or should have a broker but who does the broker represent the buyer or the seller and then the other earlier question was um uh where and so we've had a couple of questions similar to that uh, is the broker acting for the buyer or the seller? So it's coming up a fair bit. So I think it's probably a good one to talk about now. I agree. Uh, and we haven't talked about it yet, but uh, I wanted to mention this later down the track anyway. I think, yeah, this is an important uh, uh, process uh, uh, when you uh, try to find the right broker in, in terms of services. I think at one stage, once you have established the, the trust uh, uh, with a, a specific broker and uh, you can uh, you realize you know he's got the experience the knowledge and everything and can guide you through the whole steps I think it, it is then time to maybe consider having this broker as your buyer broker in other words he would represent you uh, uh, into the search of your boat you may keep on looking at uh, websites and everything and, and, and you know uh, uh, start uh, keep on uh, 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 or carry on with your search, sorry. But um, having someone that you can trust to represent you during all stages, and then he will look for the right boat, maybe even with other brokers, maybe overseas, but you know you can trust him. He will hold your hand and guide you through the whole process. This is when it becomes very important to uh, pick the right one because he's the guy who will negotiate there on your side, make sure that everything is done to preserve your interests. And uh, uh, it's something that people sometimes tend to forget. Uh, uh, he's there to uh, do some research about the boat, make sure about the history, that uh, everything is, uh, this is what uh, we say here, uh, uh, check about the history about the boat is, is, is very, it's very important. Uh, uh, we can sometimes get access to the, um, to the um, uh, history with the, with the service team from uh, the yards. We know most of the yards and uh, uh, we have uh, still some good relationship there with uh, the people there inside. We can uh, check it all out for your benefit. But sometimes, yes, you do come across a broker who is also representing the seller. And in which case, if he does his job right, he should be able to protect your side there as well to find the happy medium. It's a difficult task, but uh, 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 you will find right away whether he's doing a good job and then you can decide whether uh, uh, you carry on with him or uh, go somewhere else. And on that point, Mark, uh, one of our um, attendees, has asked, how do you handle when the buyer wants to come to you and use their own buyer's broker to work with you and the seller? So you, are you happy if someone comes to you with, uh, and say, look, I'm, I'm buying the boat, but this is my, my, my helper? Absolutely. Look, uh, 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 and, I, and I always think that uh, if the buyer uh, at one stage says, look, you know, I would feel comfortable or more comfortable to use this person to go through the whole process. Uh, uh, look, the customer is king and he, de and he decides if this is uh, what makes him uh, more comfortable, I think... Uh, at the end of the day, we all want to sell that boat and, and, and make this deal uh, happen. So if this is uh, what he is demanding, uh, uh, let's make it happen. And we have done this uh, on a few occasions. And uh, sometimes we struggle with other brokers when we try to get the same thing uh, uh, coming all way. But then again, it is up to the buyer to see whether he's comfortable to go there on his own because the other broker already uh, mentioned that he didn't want to work with us. So be, but then it gives you uh, some indication on what to expect next. And sorry, Patrick, I'll, I'll let you move on in a moment, but just one more question on exactly this same topic. Who pays for that buyer's broker? The buyer broker, he will negotiate the available commission on the sale with the selling broker. Okay. So the, the seller is always the person paying for the commission. And yes. uh, in which case there is no... Uh, extra cost for the buyer broker, sorry, for the, for, for the buyer. It just uses the experience of the person that he trusts. And he should be able to uh, impose that person to anyone else. And uh, 
uh, if the other party doesn't want to play the game, I don't know. To me, it is a, a sign of, uh, of watch out. You know, you can still go ahead, but uh, you know that you're moving into a very, uh, 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 very uh, difficult ground. So, uh, uh, yeah, there is no extra cost. Uh, uh, the commission will be shared, whatever is there available. And uh, unless nothing is feasible, and then uh, the buyer broker may tell you, look, uh, do you still want me to help you? Are you happy to, uh, for me to do this for this much money? And then you can always decide if it's not possible to do anything with the other board. Sometimes happens. You could, that's why it is so important to find the right broker in the beginning because you find a lot of, uh, of different uh, uh, people there around and, we're not, and they do not all share the same values. Very good. We've got more questions, but we'll leave that for now. I think they're specific and uh, let you carry on, Patrick. Thank you. So, um, yeah, here quickly, engine hours, something you want to check the engine hour is always a good indicator about the, the use of the boat, of course. The rigging, uh, uh, you want to check this, and after 10 years, you, you, you all have heard that uh, uh, most insurance companies will uh, ask you to uh, replace the rigging. Uh, at least uh, 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 you have to have it uh, inspected. So uh, uh, if, the, um, if the rigger or one qualified rigger tells you that uh, this can go for another year or so, or so then uh, you should be able to get uh, the insurance for it as well. History, we went through this condition. This is where uh, you want to make sure that uh, the broker who is selling uh, the boat uh, has been onto the boat. He can tell you himself about the condition uh, if you can't uh, get there because it's about far away or something. It is uh, essential to uh, find, uh, uh, to check that the broker selling has and uh, knows the boat and has been on the boat and can tell you exactly what the condition is. And I always tell the brokers, it, the whole, uh, the whole challenge is to reduce that gap between the uh, expectation of the, of the client and the reality. So we have to make sure we describe this as uh, fairly as possible. That's why we have to use you know, very recent pictures for all the listings. We have to uh, put some videos, some, uh, 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 um, how do you call them, the 360 inspections, you know, all the tools for you to be able to uh, get the best idea if that boat is far away before you engage into a trip and everything. So, this, yeah, this I think is uh, interesting to go through the, the different stages of, uh, of the purchase of the boat briefly, but I'm sure you have some questions. But to know this is important because uh, uh, once you're more familiar, you know what to expect and I think it will make the whole process a lot easier. Again, this should be a, a job for your broker to guide you through this in forehand and let you know what is coming next. So once you find the right boat, everything's been done, this is the right one, you wanna put your offer through and uh, put all those conditions. Don't hesitate once you find the right one to do this. And I know it sounds uh, easy as a broker to say that, but it is, there is very little risk there for you, but you wanna take that boat off the market, how often do we see people, they're all upset because the boat of their dream is gone. <laughs> Especially if it's a, an amazing boat and everything, sure enough, others are gonna look into this as well. So put your first right of refusal, and this is what those offers are all about. And put all those conditions in it. If you have to sell the house, but you still wanna get an option, put it on. Put in a condition to your, your house selling or settling, at least uh, maybe, uh, in the next few months or something so that and then you, you may have a chance to get this this offer through and uh, help you do your due diligence in the meantime yeah because the seller might go oh okay if it means i'm not settling for three months i can go sailing for another month or yeah but uh, it's yeah. all part of the of the negotiation the broker will help you there as well because uh, you know you can uh, put a lower offer but uh, 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 as is where it is which is not uh, very advisable, but you can say, you know, with a few less conditions at least, uh, or you can say, you know, I give you more money, but I have more conditions. So all this is important, but you really want to get the opportunity to uh, first inspect the boat, check it all day yourself, and uh, maybe say no eventually, but take her off the market and uh, put all your chances there on your side. Um, there's a uh, holding deposits once the the contract or the offer has been accepted, 
and obviously you have to ensure this is part of the of the uh, screening process that you will have done in the beginning that your broker has a, a holding account uh, uh, so that you know your money is safe and you can go through the whole process and if your conditions are not met to your satisfaction then uh, uh, you get refunded 100 percent of your deposits and you can go on the market again but it shows some good faith and allows you to do uh, as we said your due diligence so don't be too shy there because i really see it happening too often that people get really upset inspection is when you get uh, to your inspection if you didn't get a chance to do it earlier you can do it uh, later when the boat is far away or in, in another country and you have to ask yourself the question what is what what, what is it that you don't like about this model uh, uh, because uh, hopefully it was what uh, you were looking for and uh, we've described this uh, the right way is there anything and then see whether we can overcome those obstacles if you think you know i don't know the the, the bed was too small and the, you are two meter high we didn't and we didn't identify this uh, on time or maybe can we can we do this bed a bit larger or something so we need to uh, uh, get the 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 feedback while you're there then you can go into uh, the survey uh, the survey is absolutely essential i think in every sale uh, you want to have that peace of mind that someone who is qualified with a third party has been uh, through the boat and checked it all out all the safety aspects i think uh, the boat uh, look at the car you may get away with it a house you wouldn't do it you wouldn't buy uh, without you know building and pest and i think uh, uh, the, the the boat you put all your family and the loved ones there on something in the middle of the ocean you want to make sure that uh, everything has been checked. You have to do your due diligence. So I wouldn't, uh, I would never advise someone to buy a boat without the uh, proper survey, which so, leads so, Pat, so Patrick, you're saying that in that offer with the conditions, often that offer will contain subject to sea trial, subject to sale, uh, to survey, subject to inspection. Correct. So the, the, the usual conditions, uh, the most obvious, if you haven't seen the boat yet, would be the inspection, the survey, and the sea trial. Uh, uh, survey, you really need to find the right uh, uh, surveyor. And this, I think, uh, the, the good broker counts really uh, for ethical reason, uh, advise you one surveyor, but he can give you a choice of two or three or more. And then you have to do your due diligence yourself, a little bit of homework, but it's really worth uh, the effort is to uh, contact those uh, surveyors and then again see which one you feel like trusting. Uh, uh, check maybe some of their previous reports that they've done there in the past to see uh, how detailed uh, uh, they are uh, and uh, how quickly they answer you and uh, obviously the cost and everything, but uh, it is very important to find the right one. And again, you want to find someone who is familiar with uh, uh, multi hulls because otherwise uh, they start you know, going completely off track with no knowledge and you can same as brokers you find all kinds of surveyors there as well so you know make sure that you pick the right one with uh, enough experience in the uh, uh, some good reference uh, uh, yeah references sorry and this is usually for the hulls and everything to set to check the safety but then you can go as far uh, if a boat is fairly old to go into a rigging inspection because very rarely so the surveyor will climb up the mast so uh, you usually have to call for uh, a, a separate rigging inspection so a rigger is a few hundred dollars uh, uh, i think it's worth the investment to have it all checked for peace of mind everyone then will be happy and sleeping peacefully in the cabins um engines you can yeah also have a mechanic there if it's an older boat we have some doubts after your first uh, inspection you can call in uh, a mechanic there to make sure that everything is, is fine. Be careful with a the, with the mechanic. They usually try to sell their own thing there and they try to uh, depict a picture which is uh, a little bit worse than what it is. But uh, uh, it's good to have their opinion. Sea trial. Um, a good surveyor would ask you to do the sea trial because a few things you won't be able to test uh, on, uh, on the hard, like you know, checking on the sails, checking on the, on the engines running. So this is a good way to uh, test them. There should be a sea trial there with your surveyor to make sure that everything is in working order. Remember also the surveyor is the guy who will check on the whole inventory. 
that everything that you've signed on the inventory as part of your offer is in working order. So uh, whenever you do your inspection, don't spend too much time um, um, checking all those items because this is the job of the surveyor. I, I would strongly advise instead you do spend good time with, uh, with your wife uh, uh, on the boat and make sure that uh, you guys feel comfortable, that this is what you guys were hoping for and you like the volumes, you like everything, the smell, the touch, the feel, everything. And let the, the surveyor do the, the, the hard job there of checking it all out. If there are any repairs to be done, uh, can happen. Uh, uh, the surveyor has detected something which has escaped everyone else and has to be uh, addressed. Well, then uh, comes the time where uh, it can be negotiated. You, you, we, we try to get uh, a quote for the repairs and we usually deduct this from the settlement and gives you all uh, the time there to either do it or not, or do it uh, later, uh, uh, depending. Usually it should be something uh, done fairly urgently because otherwise it wouldn't be a major one. But it's something that will be part of the negotiation. Don't see this as a way to get some more bargain, but see this as something really important to check about any item really wrong on the boat, which uh, 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 is not uh, uh, expected there from uh, your offer. Insurance registration, uh, uh, this is when uh, you have done the whole process and it's time to get ready with all this. The broker should guide you through those processes as well, help you find the right registration uh, for your country. Uh, the easiest is where you reside, but uh, there may be some little hiccups for boats overseas. Uh, uh, everyone has uh, different needs there, so it's something that goes on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, just before we jump off that page, Patrick, uh, a, a relevant question. Just with the haul-out during the sales process, who pays for that? All right, the haul-out, the surveyor, all this is part of the, survey, so of the buyer's costs because these are, these are his conditions. What is uh, to be negotiated is if the boat has to be moved all the way to a specific yard to be... Uh, Hold out. Uh, uh, it's something that can be arranged between uh, the seller and the buyer. If it's, uh, say, the boat is in Mululaba, we have to take the boat uh, all the way down to the Gold Coast to be surveyed. So uh, there's something that uh, we have to discuss and negotiate between the two. But the haul out and the survey costs are for the, the buyer. And uh, lately, we have been able to uh, sell uh, those you know, some boats from overseas buyers. I can think of two cases uh, two months ago with uh, US buyers when the Australian dollar was a bit low. We've been able to sell two boats uh, sight unseen. So it was all done with uh, uh, WhatsApp or Skype or whatnot there and uh, done over the distance. And at the end, uh, this is what shows the importance of the survey because this is where a third party comes in there and checks on the boat and writes a report there for you. And the guy was happy and did even, uh, did even another sea trial there with the camera. He was away there and then the boat got uh, uh, shipped on a cargo uh, back to the US. So uh, it can happen. It's all feasible. Very good. And then, um, so the summary of that page there is at the bottom line, if someone is really keen on a boat, put the offer in with the conditions because the worst case scenario is the seller says no. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, I see that uh, I'm running out of time there, but uh, yeah, prepare for the different stages that uh, uh, we've been uh, uh, there too, but make sure that it is an enjoyable experience. So uh, the whole process has to be fun. You have to, uh, to uh, enjoy it, you know, from the time that you are defining everything uh, about the boat and then going through those different stages. It is very exciting when you're coming into uh, uh, realizing your dream there. So uh, uh, look, having like a, some champagne at the end, uh, everyone has to be with a smile. This is uh, the best uh, reward there for a good broker is to see uh, his client there with a big smile there drinking champagne at the helm of the boat. So this is uh, uh, what we all aim at uh, and then obviously carry on by offering uh, some service and, and feedback. So um, just quickly, because I'm running out of time there, but- oh, uh, Patrick, Patrick, yeah. you're, you're not running out of time. Take your time, there's no rush. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Greg. You're a good man. Um, I was thinking, for those who have a little bit of time they're up their sleeves, and they are in the early days of uh, looking at boats and uh, you know, getting interested, I think you know, I put this together and it could be useful. Um, obviously, you can find a lot of, uh, of information uh, online, uh, and you have to uh, use that amazing tool. This is what a lot of people have been doing during that uh, uh, COVID panic when no one was stranded at home, spending a lot of time in front of the computer. But you find a, a mine of information on the broker's side, manufacturer's side, yeah, owner's blog. Uh, yeah, you have to be a little bit uh, cautious there with what you read. It's not all uh, uh, to be taken to face value. Uh, I can uh, guarantee you there, there are a few of them that I know uh, uh, putting a lot of uh, posts and everything and they've never been on the boat. So it's not all uh, that, uh, that easy, but it always gives you some, and you can probably identify after a while in the read between the lines and see what is genuine, what, what is not. Articles in the press uh, uh, and go on to uh, groups and everything. It's, uh, uh, there's so much information there together, and I think a lot of you uh, are, all, are well aware, otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't be on that webinar anyway. The social media, obviously, for most of you, I'm not very good at it, but uh, I trust that uh, most of you are. Maybe you can teach me. Boat shows. Um, yes, uh, uh, we didn't have many boat shows this year, at least in Australia, or probably around the world anyway. But um, yeah, boat shows is a great, great uh, opportunity for everyone to get familiar with the different brands, the, even all the equipment. It's a, it's a fun event. Take the family there and check it all out, jump on all the boats, you know, test the, 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 the difference in, in make and design and approach. I think uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, miss it, at least on the one uh, close by. And um, you always have some uh, open days there as well or other events. Uh, try to be uh, uh, attentive to what is happening there next door and uh, uh, jump on those opportunities to uh, check it all out. We've got, look in the Gold Coast, got a picture here. We've got this, uh, uh, it's uh, called the old, the, the other water boat show, which we have the whole year because all the boats are lined up, oars and also from the competition are lined up there and you can uh, 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 check the, the different designs, see them all exposed out of the water. You can see what is underneath. I think it's, it's a great way to uh, be more familiar again with those uh, different designs and build your knowledge. It's uh, crucial. Sailing school, checking on with the, the one closest to, uh, to your place and uh, yeah, uh, engage there to uh, be more familiar with uh, the, their program. They always offer some exciting things like uh, little trips, you know, weekends out or little training. I think it's, uh, it's worth uh, uh, checking this out to build up your experience. Training is part of it, but here I've added some other things, you know, uh, uh, your radio operator training, you will need this at one stage when uh, you take your boat uh, with the, the proper equipment. They will ask you to uh, have your, your license ready. The survivor course, of course, to know uh, what to do if uh, 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 the, the worst thing happened. Uh, at least it will help you build some confidence and also reassure everyone on board because you know what to do. Um, uh, skipper training, crew training, all those are usually available. This is a great way to get onto this as well. Charter, this is essential. I think if you have, uh, say, you know, I've, I've met some clients, they are in the early stage and they say, oh, you know, two, three years away. Mate, you know, uh, uh, try to take the opportunity to, uh, to charter a boat, you know, uh, go there for a week because this is the best opportunity for you to get onto a boat, sleep on the boat, crook on the boat, you know, do everything and feel uh, uh, the boat there at uh, uh, you know, different times of the day and uh, uh, conditions. And this will help you build your own experience to uh, know at least you know, what uh, you, you don't want, what you don't like, and what is very important for you to have on the boat of your dreams. And this way, when we define your project, you'll know more about uh, what is important to you and what is not. So charter, you find them you know, everywhere. You've got them uh, in all uh, main cities here, but you've got uh, the Whit Sundays uh, abroad. You've got them in, uh, in Thailand. You've got them uh, uh, in the Pacific, in the Caribbean, uh, in the Mediterranean, everywhere. And I think you should start chartering maybe a boat which is uh, close to what you are looking for. Try to find one of them available in a charter fleet. Yes. 
And Patrick, the I, I think another important question, I look at that photo there of the yard full of stock, but I then also listen to you all the time going, oh, I need more stock, I need more stock. You, you've got a very fast turnover over the last couple of years, yeah? You, it, it's a regular turnover of your, your stock. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, because we were trying to uh, 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 skim a little bit the, 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 the listings that we can take, those, uh, uh, you know, who are uh, crazy with their asking price or those boats who, which, you know, present too many problems or anything we know is going to be a nightmare for everyone anyway. And the owners may, may not be willing to do anything on the boat. And there are a few like this. Uh, uh, so yeah, we got some, some pretty good listings and tend to, uh, to sell quickly there as well. There's a high demand still uh, here in New Zealand, but uh, thankfully we also come across uh, those who want to sell. And uh, at the moment it is a bit in imbalance, I have to admit. Uh, uh, we're missing a few uh, a few boats now in stock since uh, most of the owners are up north. They, I'm talking about uh, Australia. They are up north uh, uh, cruising and uh, enjoying their own boat for the season after being all scared by the virus. So uh, this is understandable, but we've got plenty of stock in other locations like uh, Thailand at the moment. The only issue there is uh, it's difficult to uh, to get into uh, into the country. But at least we could start you know, the process in uh, analyzing uh, the boat and uh, sending the right information through. Fantastic. So on that screen there, all those, uh, all those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven catamarans that are closest to, to the end where we are, that they are all now off mostly sailing with new owners. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're all, uh, you, You've seen the owners in the previous slide, uh, in the previous slide with a big <laughs> smile, they've, they've been gone. <laughs> yes, okay. And one other thing, uh, just uh, uh, to finish, yes. uh, join also uh, uh, whenever you can, uh, uh, try to join some uh, racing crews and everything there uh, uh, near your home, if you can find any. They've, uh, sometimes they do some casual ones, you know, the, the, uh, the, the Thursday night uh, racing, or Thursday evening. It's all fun, uh, uh, try to join a boat. Everyone is usually happy to have another crew member. Uh, uh, maybe we can find also with deliveries. So there are always opportunities. You can put your name down. There are some blackboard online sometimes as well, some opportunities to put your name and uh, try to uh, build some uh, uh, sea miles there under your belt because it's all, all good. The more you have, the better. You'll be more comfortable and then you'll be uh, in a position to uh, identify and define the perfect boat there quicker. So uh, yeah, I think we've uh, got to the end there. Sorry guys, I've been a bit uh, longer than uh, what we expected, but we've also answered a few questions along the way. So uh, uh, maybe it's time now to shoot. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And Patrick, very good. I, it's a bit like the old, how long is a piece of string? You could talk on and on forever on this subject. Uh, that's right. And I think one of the first things before we go to the Q and A, just what a credit it is to you and and the team that over this last ten years, that you've now got to such a a, a healthy level of, of operation, and you know to see all those yachts on that screen there, and just know that you've got this constant turnover. And the other really important thing that you mentioned there that was you that you are actually a little bit selective about what you choose to list. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, uh, some some brokers are happy to list uh, uh, whatever we we realize it is not beneficial for anyone uh, uh, for us to go through uh, all the investment of uh, promoting boats which are uh, not uh, at realistic price or which are not presenting uh, well enough. It's uh, it is a loss for everyone. Nothing works. The boat doesn't sell. The owner is unhappy. So uh, we have to uh, uh, screen and take. Uh, the right ones. Uh, by the way, uh, everyone there watching the, the screen, if you see that little map of uh, New Zealand there on my nose, uh, it's not a dirty screen. I've been trying to clean that lens, but it is inside the machine and uh, I don't know how to do this. So I apologize for that. That's fine, Patrick. Now listen, just going back before we go through the questions from everyone else, I, I just have a, um, a note to make there. When you, uh, the, the, your client submits their letter of offer and they say subject to survey um, or inspection, 
and then they find a couple of issues. Um, what, what's the process? What happens there? Is it a negotiation on price or, or does the owner offer to repair? Or Yeah, this is uh, uh, what we were discussing earlier. I think uh, it is always a very critical stage. Everyone is extremely nervous and uh, sometimes it gets into, uh, into the raves. Uh, 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 we need to, uh, to, to uh, uh, keep all calm there. Everything, what, what we have to keep in mind is everything on the boat can be fixed. Absolutely anything on the boat can be fixed. It's just a question of money. So we just have to check it all out. Uh, 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 don't uh, run away right away because you've seen uh, some cracks here or there. We have to have it uh, checked there. The surveyor has to go deep into this. Maybe we'll call a shipwright where she would, and will check whether it is uh, 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 artificial or cosmetic, or whether it is something which means that something has moved there inside. So uh, we have just to go and do our due diligence in, uh, in peace, get the, the proper uh, contractor, uh, licensed contractor from, uh, 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 from next door there to come and uh, 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 assess what is to be done, and if it's a serious problem, yes, okay, what is the, the, the cost for it, and we get the, the, the quote, and then it is a, a either negotiation where we can deduct this from the settlement, or uh, sometimes uh, uh, the, the seller decides to uh, have it fixed things himself, but then it is complicated because we need to have someone to check that it has been fixed as well again, and call the surveyor back in. So, Usually what happens is that we get the quote from a, an acknowledged uh, 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 contractor who can tell us what the cost will be, and this is deducted from the price of the boat. But remember, we're talking about something which is serious there on the boat. Uh, 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 we have seen those con the, the, the condition. We have to accept that uh, those boats are not new, they're used. Some boats are 10 years old and they present like a 10 year old boat. Don't, don't expect to have a new boat there either because it's not the value of a new boat either. So uh, uh, we have to accept that. Uh, yeah. Your expectation, having your expectations the right Correct, it's what we were saying. The way and tear has to be accepted. It's, these are the things which are beyond. So something serious that the surveyor has pointed out, which is, you know, which would have some uh, consequences there with the ownership. And remember, at the end of the day, if the, the buyer is uh, disagree with it and thought that uh, it was serious and the other guy should pay and uh, there is no agreement one, they can still uh, walk away, they, it's on their side. There is no obligations to still buy the boat. But this is yes. where the broker has to step in and play as, the, uh, as a proper diplomat and uh, keep both parties there happy and, uh, and settle. Very good. So listen, Patrick, we'll now move on to the Q&A session. Uh, I've got a number of uh, questions stacked up here. So what we'll try to do is rattle through them reasonably quickly. Uh, and then at the same time, um, if there's one where you go, look, that's a bit detailed, then we'll, we can share the info. You might want to email the clients after this. So but before we move on to the question and answer, because often in the Q&A uh, session, people start dropping off. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, I think that was very informative. Uh, 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 it was uh, concise and clear, and I think it has probably helped a lot of people. And it's gonna be a great resource for us to have on the, uh, on the YouTube channel. So people who are, are buying in the future can have this as a guide. Excellent. Well, thanks everyone there for uh, listening to. I hope it hasn't been uh, too long or too boring, but uh, happy to go through the questions now. Okay, so the first one, fairly specific. Uh, have you sold or do you have uh, situations often with solo sailors uh, purchasing multi holes? So have you have sold? Solo, S-O-L-O, -O, single sailors, as in uh, we're one of uh, people who are wanting to do solo sailing. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, uh, it's all it's all possible. But remember, the the problem you have with a, a solo sailor, someone on his own cruising, uh, especially if he wants to go uh, offshore, I doubt that uh, 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 he will get uh, insurance very easily. Remember, when you go offshore and you start cruising uh, overnight, then uh, 
you need to have some other members there to help you out along for the, the question of the watchers and everything. So there are always people who uh, go through it anyway and uh, 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 on their own risk. But uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, it is feasible. Uh, I'm not sure whether it is uh, the right choice. It sounds very, uh, <laughs> very appealing for those dramatic uh, 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 roles and everything there, but uh, not sure whether it is the best thing. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, to be to be fair, I think going there with a partner, especially if you go well, if you want to do a little uh, uh, coastal cruise there, it's fine during the day. But uh, night cruising and everything, you have to remember you'll be tired, and then uh, uh, you'll be missing things there up above uh, while you'll be uh, dozing off. It's going to be uh, difficult. Some uh, very skillful people may still brave it and do it and they've got some tricks i've seen a few putting you know some electronics in place with alarms and this and that it can be achieved but uh, leave it to those who are maybe professionals okay now listen these next questions i'm just going to read them out so people know that they are asked but you don't have to answer because we've already answered them so we had darren uh, ask about how much it would be to deliver uh, uh, the normal delivery costs from south asia to new zealand and uh, Charlie answered that in the question, but if anyone else has that question, just feel free to email our team. Uh, and then um, Keith asked about problem areas not to sail due to pirates, and uh, Rachel has answered that and directed Keith to the Noon site website, uh, which is very good for all of that. And then um, um, Mark was uh, asked the questions earlier on about the buyer or seller, which we've answered. And then the, a question that we didn't answer through there is how are buyers handling the potential buyers in areas with COVID-19? Although I do think you mentioned that in terms of using Zoom and Facebook. Yeah, and so I think um, we are lucky enough uh, at the moment, even though, yeah, we've got that big threat there, but uh, we're lucky enough to have a lot of technology on, on our side. And uh, we have been able, uh, just negotiating, to not need to call him, there's a client from... Uh, France, who's uh, buying a boat in uh, New South Wales, in, uh, in the Yamba of all places. And uh, 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 look, it is over the, 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 the distance. We are organizing uh, a proper inspection with uh, uh, FaceTime or WhatsApp or Skype or one of those. And he will have a, a good inspection of the boat. He's seen the video, he's seen the pictures. We had some uh, uh, long talks about uh, the, the, the layout and the equipment. So uh, after this, he will go through uh, the survey. So obviously he's, he's choosing a local surveyor. This, you can't fly your own surveyor over. It's too difficult. So uh, he's, uh, it would be too, too costly anyway. So you use uh, one of the local surveyors that, that uh, our team is trying to uh, uh, identify there, at least in a few of them for you to choose. So I gave him a list of uh, four or five and he picked one. And the guy is going to fly, uh, uh, sorry, drive down from the Gold Coast all the way to Yamba and do the, the, uh, the, the survey. After the survey, if he's happy with this, including the sea trial, then uh, uh, he's happy to settle and uh, wait until he can fly over safely and take ownership of his boat. And we have... Yeah, and you know, if you're, if you're coming to pick up a boat to go sailing for two years through the South Pacific, he might be prepared to fly over, do his hotel quarantine and then go sailing. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so he will do this and, uh, and jump onto the boat. So it is feasible. If you're not comfortable, you don't have to do it, but uh, others have done it and uh, we can make it work and we can uh, help you through the whole process. So uh, Excellent. Uh, 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 yes, technology okay. can help us. So then uh, Leanne asked about bridge deck clearance and is it important? If so, what would be the minimum height? Leanne, that's a really specific question. So I'm going to get Patrick to uh, probably, we, we get a list of these questions. So he'll probably contact you over the next few days and I answer that question because it's a bit like how long is the piece of string, but- It is. Bridge it deck is. clearance is important, but it's the answer is also, uh, very varied. So I think a phone call or an email will, will work on that one best. Yeah. Um, and then um, uh, Bradley asked, where can he get sold boat values online? Well, this is uh, the same as uh, for uh, real estate. You have to ask uh, the broker. You won't get those uh, this information. That's the the the, the back office of uh, some of the websites, not all of them anyway. 
but uh, uh, some of them do offer that feature, and I'm talking about uh, some uh, worldwide uh, uh, ones, so that uh, we can we can access prices from boats all over the world. And then, uh, uh, as we said, you can uh, you should count on the values that uh, this uh, specific broker can uh, uh, talk about. You know, boats that he has sold there himself. Hopefully, if we talk about some uh, production boats, we will have sold a few of them during and you know, on the past year or so and be able to provide him with those uh, values. Okay, very good. And then Sam asked a question specifically about his budget and what he wants to do. So Sam, good question. We like those questions. Uh, but I'm going to get Patrick to contact you or one of his brokers will contact you because um, uh, directly over the weekend sure. on that one. And um, we'll get you sailing in six to eight months as you have asked. Um, and then Sam did ask a question. You haven't covered it at all, Patrick, I don't think. What does the broker charge? So when the buyer is buying the boat, obviously, the, oh no, sorry, that's not specific to this, is it? Because it's the seller who pays the broker. So the answer is- Yeah, we did, we did answer yeah. that. We, we did yeah. say that uh, the, the, the broker is paid on the, on the, on the transaction done yeah. uh, by the seller. The seller yeah. has uh, provisioned uh, uh, in the contract to uh, pay the broker uh, a certain amount there, depending on the on the boat and where and everything. But uh, and this is being uh, this is the 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 the, the commission for yeah. the, the broker. And if it's shared, well, so be it. Then it is shared uh, uh, according a system between brokers. Uh, uh, but there's no extra cost. The same as real estate, exactly. Correct. Okay. Now we just um, we did have a couple of questions, um, and I can answer them as well. People were asking about what if I buy a boat overseas uh, that has taxes unpaid and want to bring it back into Australia. Uh, and look, the answer to that is if you sail it back into Australia as you arrive, you you will need to be paying a, a, a duty and GST. And that would be calculated by the um, border force who have a department who they are very smart as well. They do exactly what Pat talked about before about looking for resale values. And there will also be the engagement of an independent uh, valuer. And uh, the boat would be valued. Hold on, I'm it is a little bit more, more precise than, than this, but I can do it in a very, very quickly. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, um, a boat, if you buy a boat overseas and bring that boat within 12 months, you will have to pay taxes on the value that you pay the boat for. Sorry, yes. It will be on your, on your bill of sale. And this is what uh, they will use to calculate uh, uh, the 5% import duties and the 10% GST on top. So 15.5% uh, 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 roughly. Um, and, uh, and if you... Uh, uh, bring a boat to be imported, then uh, it will be uh, valued by a surveyor. And the surveyor will use, it will have to use some market value. So it will be pretty close to uh, 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 what uh, we would give you uh, as a value. So that's if, it's, that, that's if it's beyond 12 months of the initial transaction. Correct. Beyond 12 yeah. months, you've been cruising there, you bought the boat, say, in uh, ideally, this is what I always dream of, you buy the boat in Polynesia, and have the best time there in the two hour motors, you leave the boat there for three years because this is what they allow you to uh, use. And then slowly, you know, uh, cruise down the Pacific through those horrible places like Tonga, Fiji and whatnot. And then eventually uh, uh, come into, uh, into your home country. Uh, uh, then uh, 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 because it is more than a year, it will be done on evaluation done by a surveyor. And if you do sell the boat right after being imported, then the, the taxes will be adjusted to the sold value again. So uh, uh, there isn't any, you know, any margin there or not much there to play with. It will be pretty much the market value in any case. And a very good question from Ray. And I know, I know Patrick, we come across this all the time. How much does it cost to import a used boat from New Zealand to Australia, assuming the taxes have already been paid in that country, i.e. New Zealand? Is the boat also subject to Australian GST if I sail it back to Australia? <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, uh, yeah. There, it, there's one thing which you can avoid is the duty. 
if, if, the poor, if, if, if they pay duties already, you can uh, uh, get away with that, but uh, the GST will have to be paid. Uh, GST is uh, 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 with every country, so they want to make money. And it's uh, even more complicated or more uh, tricky, if you think about it, if uh, a boat has paid GST, say, in Australia, for example, and goes cruising, and you buy that, that, that very same boat somewhere in the Tuamotus and bring the boat back, you have to pay GST again because the boat changed hands outside of the country. And this, is, this, this, is, import, this is important, Patrick, because so many of, because of the increasing number of people who are buying production boats from overseas factories, and then sailing for two, three, four, five years around the Mediterranean, Caribbean, Pacific, in a tax, no tax paid environment, then they're bringing to market. That this is important, isn't it, to differentiate between this no tax paid and tax paid and the impact of that. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it is massive. That's why, you know, the same as uh, for new boats, you know, the, the appeal of getting a boat uh, overseas is, uh, is massive if you had, uh, or if you have the, 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 the time on your side and uh, no obligations uh, anymore and you can uh, start cruising wherever you want, I think the appeal of a boat overseas, uh, not taxes paid, is quite important. Even if you plan on bringing the boat back into Australia one day, hopefully after a year, uh, uh, then uh, at least on your cash flow, you still benefit from it. You've been cruising there for a year for, uh, without having to pay your taxes. So the boat is, is registered at home, you go cruising, but you only pay when you get back, if you ever go back. Some, some owners decide to sell the boat before uh, uh, coming back into Australia. So it's something to keep in mind always. It's a, it's a, it's a massive factor. And when I yes. hear, for example, a lot of our clients saying, oh, how much does it cost to bring this boat from uh, Tahiti, say, you know, back into Australia for us to have the boat here, I usually say, or from uh, uh, Thailand, you know, very often, uh, how much does it cost to get the boat uh, imported? And I usually say, mate, don't you really want to go cruising there a little bit and enjoy the location where the boat is? It is in a fantastic place, which will be difficult to reach once you're back home. And you can do three years. The boat can be in, Ta in Tahiti for three years, can't it? as much as you can because for the money that you have saved during this time you can really fly business class each time back and <laughs> forth so uh, it's something to keep in mind a nice boat in, Th in Thailand uh, uh, will be nice to keep the Thailand as a second home for, for a while so obviously everyone has, has different constraints there with, with their life just to wash some consider. of the purchase value off so that when you do come to pay you, your GST you're paying it on a lesser value yeah Correct. Yeah. It's something so to always keep in mind. It, 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 it is very, very interesting. It's, it's, it's actually fairly simple once you understand, but uh, uh, we've got boats in, uh, in those amazing locations. If you have time up your sleeves, think about it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, it would be crazy to bring it back so and we'll, to paying taxes. We'll keep moving on. So Neil asked a question that uh, he, he asked, uh, I've had it described that any hull over 15 years old is a complete money sink and should be avoided. But I'm, Neil, I've read that question again. Again, I'm going to ask uh, Patrick to, to um, answer you specifically in an email uh, over the weekend about that one. You've asked about recommending buying an older hole with the expectation of spending. Again, it's a very long uh, question and a long answer. Um, so I'll just keep going. Um, so with the haul out during sales, you've answered that. Does the buyer pay? Um, You've also, um, oh, someone's asked there for Patrick's contact details, which of course we'll get for you. Uh, and so, yeah, actually we're at the end of, unless I miss, oh, sorry, no, we're not. Um, uh, what's the criteria? So Peter, Peter asked, this is back to your earlier point about if during the survey, the surveyor finds things to be repaired. Uh, and he asked, what's the criteria for an item to be repaired? Not working, poor condition, what condition level oh, is I mean, usually, but, I think, but I think you've already answered that. So we'll-, we'll There's one, one thing I can add on, on, yes. on to this is uh, that uh, every item which has been described on the inventory, all those uh, uh, electronics, washing machine, dishwasher, whatever was on the option 
as part of your offer has to be in working order. And we have to ensure that uh, someone, it has to be the surveyor, will check that all those items are in working order. If they are not, they have to be uh, repaired or replaced, but it has to be in working order. So everything on the boat that you paid for has to be working, and if not, yep. replaced. Very good. And then um, Sam also asked, on average, do people offer 20% less? Uh, not necessarily, Sam. That's where you and the broker talk. Yeah. Especially if, if, if the value has been calculated the, the, the right way. And I think it's something that we can do with you the same way we have been through all those values with the seller. We can do the same process there with the buyer and explain to you what the market is, what those sold boat values are, and what you know the boat is, uh, 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 you know, should be advertised. I mean, should be sold at, or what you can uh, offer. We can help you there in the negotiation process. Uh, rarely, so it can happen. Uh, uh, you know, some, some, if the, the circumstances of the of the owner are really difficult and everything, you may be tempted, but uh, rarely so at the moment. Uh, uh, you can. Uh, Everyone wants to have a win. It will be a negotiation. And sure enough, the buyer is part of the market. So he will dictate the price more than the seller. But uh, uh, remember, the seller uh, has the right to uh, refuse your offer anyway and carry on. So uh, uh, you can still put your offer. That's why any offer uh, which has been uh, formalized onto paper and remember, uh, as important as the value that you put on your offer, 20% less or whatever, uh, 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 you have to put your conditions in all yeah. this is part of the offer. And as I said, you know, maybe if you ask 20% off, you are ready to buy the boat uh, uh, as is where it is. And then the guy will have to, uh, to think about it. Uh, 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 maybe it is something that uh, could be appealing for him. As I said, I wouldn't recommend this unless it is a very recent boat. Uh, even so, I wouldn't recommend buying sight on scene without any survey, but it is your right in the maybe then you can get a bargain. So the conditions are almost as important as the value that you put on your offer. Very good. Now listen, Patrick, we still got a fair few dozen people uh, online. So you, you haven't scared everyone off, which is great. <laughs> Uh, so, and we've still got a few more questions, but to, uh, to anyone that's still with us, there's a few questions. Some of them are quite specific, so we'll keep going, but uh, we'll just take this opportunity to thank everyone for joining us, and, uh, and, but we'll keep going now, and I'm, I'm sure we'll see a few people bleed off, but we'll probably just go for a few more minutes and then bring it to a close. Um, there was a question from Darren about indicative cost question, roughly how much does it cost to replace standing rigging on a 41 to 46 foot production hat? Um, Darren, again, long piece of string there. Patrick, will come back to you over the next few days uh, and, and give you an answer. Remember, I don't even know where, where, where Darren is. He could be uh, yes, uh, in the exactly. US, he could be in New Zealand, he could be wherever, but I'm happy yeah, to answer those specific yes. questions. So Patrick will be given a, an Excel spreadsheet with all these questions and the contact details. So he'll, he'll come to you on that one. Uh, Sam asked, do you think charter companies will start selling the cats soon because of coronavirus? That's an interesting question, Sam. Um, in Australia, the answer is no, because the Australian charter companies are actually very busy uh, because domestic tourism is sort of over, overtaking international tourism or outbound tourism in Australia. So we talk to the local operators and all of the local operators are actually got very busy books. It's been thrown off course slightly by the Sydney uh, lockdown between Queensland and Sydney, but generally they're looking at a very busy uh, next 12 months to two years. Overseas, uh, I don't necessarily think they're going to sell off their cats any faster than they are. Um, they are still busy. So the European uh, charter companies are still busy with Europeans and the Caribbean ones are still busy with uh, Americans and Europeans. So we haven't seen that yet, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that and the market will let us know. Um, Can I also say, we, 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 don't, we haven't sold, uh, I mean, I, I haven't sold many of... No was ex-charter boats from overseas to our clients here. Uh, uh, and the reason is, uh, gosh, you know, those boats have been through a lot there already. 
uh, you're going to go all the way to the other side of the world to find a boat where you will have to put uh, some energy, some work and everything. So, uh, uh, and, and a lot of the charter companies do their own brokerage, don't they? That's true. Yeah. And then um, Mark asked, have you got an example of a buyer buying a boat outside Australia where there's been virus issues? Um, it's a good question. You know, normally we'd say... Well, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, we did uh, lose a deal um, on, uh, on a contract. We've got a Helia 44 and that was sold uh, before we even put the boat on the market. We had the, the buyer there lined up and uh, uh, yeah, he got, uh, he got scared at one stage and uh, he pulled out. So uh, the boat now is officially on the market since uh, I think a month now and we're starting to get some inquiries. But uh, of course, yeah, look, uh, uh, everyone is, is, is different. Uh, and the, at the same time, there are two boats, two Lucias that we uh, sold in Europe. And uh, uh, the owner flew over there from New Zealand to uh, uh, do the handover of his boat over there. And he's uh, coming back now. He's, he knows he will have to spend uh, two weeks in, uh, in quarantine, but that was the price to sell his boat. So uh, yeah, everything is, is, is possible. And the owner there uh, trying to sell his, uh, 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 the boat that we've got there, I told you, Nyamba, is flying over from uh, Tassie, from Tasmania, into uh, New South Wales uh, to prepare the boat, do uh, the survey and everything. And uh, he knows on the way back he will be uh, also quarantined for two weeks. Yeah. But he said uh, that was uh, the price to pay to get uh, the thing over the line. There's a bit of a risk, but uh, I think it's, it's pretty much controlled. We've been through everything there together. So yes, of course, uh, uh, it does no, affect and some people uh, may pull out. Very good. So listen, I think we're going to uh, finish up there. We've got some questions there from Trevor, from Brett uh, and Mark and Karen. I think we just answered Karen's question about buying its charter. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish this for today and then Patrick will uh, respond to your questions on the email. Uh, so I think that's fantastic for today because we've gone for an hour and a half, Patrick. So I think we need to pull, pull the pin before we get cut off. Uh, yeah, good, because I have closed the office here and I've got yes. a showing day uh, uh, coming and I can't just leave it closed because I'm showing a boat here in Mululaba. No, that, that's fantastic. So thank you to all of our uh, clients and, and interested participants today. We really uh, appreciate For your interest, your guys. I really uh, appreciate all this uh, attendance. Thank you, uh, Greg and Rachel, uh, uh, for your support. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much for your support. Okay, so we're going to finish the meeting now. So thank you. Well done. Thank you.